In this 75 GT 750, I'm gonna bore this out. Stock bore is about 70 millimeters. I've got 71 millimeter pistons, and right now I'm trying to decide, because of the way my machine clamps this cylinder, I can put this top surface down and pull the boring bar through the top, or I can mount it just like it sits now and pull down to the bottom. I think I'm gonna pull this stud here and mount it upside down because if I ever get chatter on that boring bar, I'm able to stop it in time and change the speed of the boring bar and that'll eliminate chatter. But if it did happen on a final pass or something like that, it would be at the bottom of the bore, not in the compression area. So let's start by removing this stud. I mean, There it goes. I thought I was going to have to heat it and then wait for it to cool again to bore it. Poor man's granite surface, just a piece of glass with 220 tape down. I'm going to pass the top of the cylinder head across it, making sure, because like where I removed that stud that was raised just a little bit, I want to make sure this is perfectly flat. That's going to be our reference for boring the holes. So we're just going to lay it on, kind of push it that way. Push it that way a few times and see how flat we are. Okay, I can see, I'm sure the camera won't pick it up, but I made a cross hatch pattern across here into 20 scratches and I'm looking for high spots or low spots. And it looks like it's pretty consistent with the exception of this low spot here around uh, the left hand cylinder. Got OEM pistons, the largest size is one millimeter over so they start at 70 these are going to be about 71 millimeters we know that it also something to note is the offset the wrist pin with the skirts face off to the left and i believe that is because you have ring keepers and that's going to keep the openings out of some port so there's two left pistons and one right piston uh, while we've got them here, I'm going to measure. This is just going to be a starting point. And find the widest part on this particular piston. It's about one inch from the bottom of the skirt. And I get the reading of 2794. And then I verify that with a micrometer. And I do indeed 2794. Now we're going to add our clearance to Suzuki recommends 0 0.0018 to 0 0.0022. So that really means a two thousandths clearance plus or minus two ten thousandths. So we're going to shoot for the middle at two thousandths and add that to our 2794, which gives us 2796. 2796 is what we're going to set the boring bar up to. Let's move to that. I'm going to set up the last cylinder here on camera. I've got one of these things came with the machine. It's a centering device. It goes in the end of the quill. The fingers extend when you tighten. It's okay for smaller cylinders. There's an adapter in here. I don't like it for large cylinders. So I'll show you what I made. And we're going head down. And I'll explain that again. Uh, I mentioned because of chatter. When the quill's all the way out, you're more likely to get chatter at the end of the quill travel as opposed to down. And this is actually more important. I know skirt contact area is important on two-stroke, but uh, in the compression area to have any kind of defect, we're going to run into trouble. All right, so let's put our cone on. Now that's tight because I use it to actually hold the weight of everything while I clamp it. As we're going down, it's pulling it more center. It's not gonna be perfect, but it gets it close and it holds it. I can move my three, two, one blocks out of the way of the bar.
So to get this off, we're just going to lower the quill. And we'll take a look down in there and make sure that our blocks are out of the way and we don't chip them or wreck the cylinder. Okay, we're going to put the bit in and here's the grind I use. It's kind of my own thinking. I like putting a little radius in the tip here. This is a high speed steel M2. Let's put that down. And we're going to be pushing it towards the cylinder wall and snugging the screw just to make sure that we're close to round. And we'll make our adjustments with a hammer if we're off. So just with the cone, we've got it pretty close to center. Let's bring the bit up. We're going to add two thousandth to where it was just touching the cylinder. And let's read what we got. We've got two seven plus five. And we're there. The first cut is nerve wracking. Just want to make sure you get it in the center. Turn it by hand. Sit in this corner first. And now it's in this corner. We're gonna be pretty close. The cylinder's just out around. Let's bring it on down past that transfer port. Do the same thing down here. in here for sure. It's dragging all the way across these. It's not touching where the intakes are. Let's just check it a little lower. Touching all the way around and just barely, it's just dragging. Okay, I'm ready on the trigger because if it ever starts to go whoop, 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 you'll hear me stop. On the other cylinders, it was doing it just past the transfer port. But once it gets to full cut, right about now. Looks like we're gonna make it. First pass was good. Probably could have got away with first over pistons on this bike, but we're into it now. You can never really tell what the extent of the damage is until you make a cut on it. You can guess at it, so that's why I always guess higher. Um, we've split the difference. Our final measurement is going to be at 46 here, so 275 plus 46 is 296. Let's go 231 right in there. Not too important right now. And we'll tighten our screw. This one I stripped. 
And these set screws, they take a lot of abuse. They get moved about 10 times a cylinder, so I'm going to show you my trick. Take some valve grinding compound, goop that on this Allen wrench, because we've got a stuck one. Put that in there. Okay, got her broke. I'm going to have to get out the camera out of my way, but got her broke loose and we're going to replace that. Okay, this will be the second pass. Okay, I'm running it backwards. We're going to do the last pass to our final measurement. You don't want to run the coil back up on your final pass. Uh, after your final pass, it will mark up your cylinder. 796. Dyslexic. 2796. Okay. Here we go. You can sense it. I, I can't explain it, and I don't know if the video is picking it up or not, but it starts to get this, like, <laughs> noise, and it just grows. You've got to stop it and start again, or it'll chatter on your last pass. You'll never hone it all out. It's because it's an interrupted cut. It starts to bounce like a washboard on a road. The setup's pretty rigid. See, so you heard it there. We don't want that. Well, that's all she wrote. If we did it right, the piston should go up to about the wrist pin on this piston. And the rest will be done by honing. So we made it. Three holes in a GT750, 71 millimeter overbore. I'm gonna do some math and see uh, what my displacement will be now. I can put this same left piston in the middle hole. It goes a little further. We're gonna have to do a lot more honing on this cylinder. But that's okay because we got a little chatter. If we made another pass less than a thousandth, it's just gonna make the chatter worse. And I'm going to gloss over how to hone these out. What you want to look for is a Sunnen style hone. This is a Lyle hone. And with rigid stones, if you've got any imperfections in a cylinder, like grooves, or if you're trying to straighten one out, which we've already done on a boring bar, we know it's as straight as can be, or straight as I can get it. We don't want to create problems with a flexible style stone. And what the flexible style stones do, they might hit a port passage. Uh, an opening and start to washboard inside the cylinder and if you keep going and keep going and keep going you're going to exaggerate those imperfections over and over again until they just ruin your brand new bore the, i had intentionally left two thousandths to hone out and that what that'll do is that leaves the piston going down now in a in a rough bore to about where the pin boss is so i'm going to run this through until the piston fits the last thing i'll do is just breeze through the cylinder with one of these ball style hones and these create a great finish for the rings to break in on it's 280 grit first couple passes just kind of seat the stone so leave it loose and you'll be making a lot of adjustments in the first few bit Before we slap this cylinder on, we need to chamfer these port openings. And what I'm going to use is a Dremel tool with a red garnet grinder. Uh, all we're trying to do is keep the rings from catching in an opening. 
So we want to round those off and the angle to use is the same as the lead in on the cylinder here. If you haven't bored it wide enough to uh, remove that angle, just match that angle. You're going to be pretty safe with that. Double check, triple check your work, whatever it takes. Just look at it from all angles. Uh, you know, I'll start from this side of the cylinder and get everything that I can reach from there. Then I'll spin it around and do the tops. And let's just finish up this last bore. Solvent wash this thing, let's go.